Hey guys, this is Caleb with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander deck tech from Commander Legends. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. You can check out their new and improved online store and support this channel while doing so by clicking the link in the description below. We also have a deck list in the description that you can copy and paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. To support our channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Let's dive into today's commander, Jared Cartholian, True Air. Jared costs a red, a green, and a white mana to cast. He's a 3-3 human warrior with two abilities. Whenever Jared enters the battlefield, target opponent becomes the monarch. You can't become the monarch this turn. If damage would be dealt to Jared while you're the monarch, prevent that damage and put that many plus one plus one counters on it. If you didn't already know, Monarch is back in Commander Legends, which is super awesome. Monarch was first introduced in Conspiracy, which was also a multiplayer draft format, and a player that is the Monarch essentially has an emblem that says, at the beginning of your end step, draw a card. And whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, its controller becomes the Monarch. Essentially, there are two ways to get the Monarch back, since Jared gives it away as soon as he comes into play. And we really want to get Monarch back to be able to turn on Jared's second ability. And the way to do that is by dealing combat damage to the Monarch, or by playing another card that makes us the Monarch. It's going to be absolutely vital that, as the Jared player, we get and retain the Monarch. I usually like building decks around commanders that have many options or strategies and win cons, and although Jared is most likely going to be your main win con and the focus of this deck, there are many strategies that you can build the deck around. Though decks that rely heavily on playing and having your commander are becoming less and less popular, I think that Jared seems like a super fun commander to build around. So let's jump into the main strategy of my Jared deck, and I'll talk about the cards that I have included. No matter how you decide to build your Jared deck, one thing is going to be pretty consistent throughout all Jared decks, and that is taking back the crown and keeping it. The goal of this deck is to make Jared huge, give him unblockable or trample, wipe the board with damage dealing board wipes that in the process buff Jared, then destroy your opponents while they're down. That's why the number one priority is always going to be becoming and staying the Monarch. The easiest and best way to do that is by playing cards that make you the Monarch. You don't want to rely too heavily on having to swing out and steal the crown through combat damage because you'll most likely want Jared's ability online during your combat steps. There is a cycle of new enchantments from Commander Legends that are all court of something and we have access to the three best ones in my opinion. They are... Court of Bounty, Court of Grace, and Court of Ire. When these courts enter the battlefield, you become the Monarch. Then, on your upkeep, their second abilities trigger, and if you are still the Monarch, the ability is much more powerful. For example, Court of Grace creates a 1-1 White Spirit with flying, but if you're the Monarch, you get a 4-4 White Angel with flying instead. Court of Ire is especially good in this deck because it deals 2 damage, to any target, or 7 if you are the Monarch. You can always aim that 7 damage at Jared and immediately pump him up or you can take out a threat or even finish off a dying opponent. This card is fantastic in the deck. Definitely jam at least Court of Grace and Court of Ire into your Jared deck. Dawnglade Regent, Archon of Coronation, Crimson Fleet Commodore, and Emberwild Captain are all new creatures from Commander Legends that make you the Monarch when they enter the battlefield. You also have access to older Conspiracy cards, some of which were reprinted in this set as well, such as Crown Hunter Hireling, Entourage of Trust, Palace Sentinels, Protector of the Crown, Skyline Despot, and my two favorite Monarch cards, Palace Jailer and Regal Behemoth. You probably don't need to run all of these, but if you want a really easy way to get and keep the crown, you should run as many of the best ones as possible. I'm not running Protector of the Crown because it messes with some of the cards in the deck, and I'm also not running the more mana-intensive ones like Dawnglade Regent and Skyline Despot, even though they are really, really good. Becoming and staying the Monarch is going to make you a huge target at the table because other players are going to be enticed, by that extra card draw and will definitely be attacking you, so I suggest running even more cards to help you keep the crown after your creatures have stolen it back. While I do love the mini game that Monarch creates, this is not a deck that is okay with losing the crown even for a second. 
Throne of the High City is a pricey but quick maneuver for getting Monarch back if you lose it. Obscuring Haze and Fog can come out of nowhere to prevent an opponent from taking what is rightfully yours. Mimic Vat can be used to imprint cards like Palace Jailer when they die, then it creates tokens that are copies of whatever card it imprinted. Imprinting a creature that grants you the crown guarantees that at least once per turn cycle, you can become the monarch at instant speed, that is if you hold up the mana for it. And this is absolutely fantastic, just make sure that you time it right. Pariah and Pariah Shield redirect all damage that would be dealt to you, to the enchanted or equipped creature of your choice, which 99% of the time is going to be Jared, ensuring that you never lose the monarch due to combat damage, and also, in the process, buffing Jared. If you are forced to take back the monarch with combat damage, you'll want to make sure that you can give your creatures unblockable, trample, or flying. Prowler's Helm, Trailblazer's Boots, and Whisper Silk Cloak are all equipments that will make your creatures unblockable. Spirit Mantle is an aura that gives your enchanted creature protection from other creatures, and Shield of the Oversoul is an aura that gives a creature indestructible and plus one plus one if it's green, and if it's white, it gets flying and plus one plus one. This actually brings me to the next part of our strategy, which is a few cards that focus on counters, starting with Luminous Broodmoth. Obviously, we're mostly looking to make a bunch of plus one plus one counters on Jared, but Luminous Broodmoth returns our creatures without flying to the battlefield when they die with a flying counter on them. Turning our creatures into flyers will help defend the crown against other flyers and make it easier to steal it back. Also, if your opponent swings in with a bunch of creatures to steal the crown and you lose it to combat damage, but you also block with Palace Jailer and it dies from blocking, it will return as a flyer and make you the monarch again as long as you've got Luminous Broodmoth out. Because of that, in my opinion, this is a must-have in the deck. And another must-have that is probably one of my favorite cards for this deck is the Ozolith. When Jared or other creatures with counters on them die, the Ozolith will hold on to those counters for you, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, you can move those counters back to a newly summoned or already buffed Jared. This way, even if Jared is murdered with 100 plus one plus one counters on him, you don't lose the investments that you've put into making him absolutely huge. A few other cards that I've included are Hydra's Growth, Colonian Hydra, and Branching Evolution to double the amount of plus one plus one counters Jared gets or grow them exponentially. These are incredibly powerful cards in the deck that can make Jared an absolute giant if they aren't dealt with immediately. Now that we've talked about making sure Jared's ability stays turned on and how to make it even stronger, let's talk about activating it. One of the easiest ways is to throw him directly into a fight with another one of your opponent's creatures with cards such as Wolvenwald Tracker, Arena, Pit Fight, Inscription of Abundance, Ancient Animus, and Titanic Brawl. In my initial build of this deck, I am only running these last three, but that could very well change as I continue to test the deck. There are a lot of other fight cards that you can put in this section as well, so if you have some lying around in your collection, definitely throw them in. Board wipes that deal damage instead of destroying or bouncing creatures are twofold in this deck as they will pump Jared immensely and clear the path for him to attack. There are a ton of options like Blasphemous Act, Anger of the Gods, Chain Reaction, Magma Quake, Rolling Earthquake, Solar Blaze, and Star of Extinction. I am playing most of these and I suggest playing as many of them as you can as well. Playing a Gideon Sacrifice or a Saving Grace on Jared will not only save your other creatures after playing a board wipe like Starve Extinction, but they will also massively buff Jared if you have multiple other creatures on the board. A great way to finish off that final opponent is by playing cards like Fling, Thud, Soul's Fire, and Kazul's Fury, which also doubles as a land in your mana base. Out of these four, I've only included Soul's Fire and Kazul's Fury in my initial build, but that's not all. The best of these is definitely Chandra's Ignition, and it's a must have in this deck. This card can be another board wipe to buff Jared, or it can be used on an already huge Jared to wipe the board and even just kill your opponents outright. With all this damage flying around, you may want to consider running creatures that redirect damage to your opponents, or even Jared, 
such as Boros Reckoner, Brash Taunter, Nomads and Core, Spite Mare, and of course Stuffy Doll. Brash Taunter and Nomads and Core work best with Jared, so those are the only two that I've included at the moment. The last part of our main strategy is making Jared even more dangerous with equipments, auras, and other things to give him added abilities. I've decided to run Shadow Spear, Dark Steel Plate, Mage Slayer, and Sword of Vengeance. Shadow Spear can help you deal with pesky gods and other indestructible threats. Mage Slayer can do an insane amount of damage if Jared is already buff, and Sword of Vengeance pretty much does everything that you want it to. As for Auras, we've already talked about Shield of the Oversoul and Spirit Mantle, but Guilty Conscience is another that I've included which is a super cool way to double Jared's power and toughness every time he deals damage. Lastly, Kessig Wolfrun and Skarg the Rage Pits are lands that can give Jared Trample and some extra power. Alright, now let's talk about the essentials for making sure that we can do what we want to do. We're in Naya, so Ramp is easy to come by. However, because Jared costs natural Naya to cast, getting him out early might prove to be a little bit of a challenge. So if your goal is to get Jared out by turn 2, you'll definitely want to run Lotus Petal, which costs 0 to play and can be sacrificed to add 1 mana of any color to your pool. The reason that you may want to get Jared out a turn early is to get Monarch out there and then take it back as quickly as possible and... The more time that you give your opponents, the harder it is to steal it back if we have to rely on combat. Other ways to get Jared out by turn 2 are one drop mana dorks such as Avacyn's Pilgrim and Birds of Paradise. Because of all those board wipes, artifacts like Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and other signets and talismans in Naya's colors are probably better options. Even more solid ramp includes the usual Cultivate, Farseek, Kodama's Reach, Nature's Lore, Smothering Tithe, and the now super accessible 3 Visits. We've got some great card draw options that synergize really well with Jared such as Colossal Majesty, Hunter's Insight, Orin Frostfang, Return of the Wild Speaker, Rishkar's Expertise, and Soul's Majesty. These all capitalize off of our strategy to make Jared absolutely ginormous. Other cards that I've included are Guardian Project and Ripjaw Raptor. I haven't included as much card draw in this deck because we're really hoping to have the Monarch for most of the game, which will also be drawing us extra cards. As for removal, depending on how many board wipes and fight cards that you've already included, you may not need to add a whole lot in your targeted removal section. However, you have a ton of good options available to you such as Path to Exile, Swords to Plowshares, Chaos Warp, Beast Within, etc. I touched on a lot of protection options already, but if you find yourself needing more, like I probably will in my playgroup, I've got some extra spells and equipment that you will probably want to run. There are the classic shoes in the form of Swiftfoot Boots and Lightning Greaves, but only run Greaves if you aren't planning on targeting Jared with a lot of the cards that we've already talked about. Swiftfoot Boots is going to be better 99% of the time, so I'm not even running Greaves. After that, I am running Blossoming Defense, Heroic Intervention, Ranger's Guile, and Flawless Maneuver. Other options include Sheltering Word, Teferi's Protection, and Unbreakable Formation. Before we end the video, I've got some quick extras for you. A really good way to negate that clause from Jared's first ability about not being able to become the Monarch, and also in order to prevent your opponents from benefiting from it, you can just cast Jared at the end of your opponent's turn, just before yours, using cards like Savage Summoning, Scout's Warning, or Vivian Champion of the Wilds. Some extra win conditions that you can include are Pathbreaker Ibex and Overwhelming Stampede, which I've thrown in as a little bit of insurance, or also just as the final nail in the coffin. Lastly, if your friends don't strangle you for playing Infect, try out Triumph of the Hordes or Grafted Exoskeleton. Alright, you've made it to the end of the video. I really hope that it has been helpful for you in your brewing process for Jared. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Be sure to check out and sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to support us directly, view exclusive content, join our Discord, and receive merch and tons of other sweet perks. Thanks again to GameGrid Lehigh for sponsoring our channel. You can click on the link to their website in the description to shop for your magic needs, and you'll also be supporting our channel at the same time. GameGrid is now shipping nationwide, so be sure to take advantage of that. 
And also be sure to join us for our live streams every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for some Brawl on Arena or for some live deck techs. Lastly, you can find us on Twitter at Command Valley P1 and on Facebook by clicking the link below. Thanks everyone, stay safe out there.